Now the soil down here is incredibly sandy. In fact, what most of it is, is the sand that was blown over the roads a few years ago when we had all of those huge dust storms down here, around the Elgin area. So uh, the local farmer scooped up all the sand off the road to clear the roads and then tipped it on an old field that he had. Now the field itself was just clay. So you can imagine by putting sand on top of clay, you don't get a very good growing medium, but we're giving it a shot. Now each year we put in a few tons of compost and we do a bit of mulch gardening and I put in a lot of my own worm compost as well. So the idea is to make the soil a bit more friable, a bit more usable, get a bit of life in it. Now the, the, the soil itself normally, see if I can show you, gets uh, ploughed by the farmer and he does a great job of it. I don't know if you can see that, he does these lovely furrows. Now furrows are brilliant for planting certain things but not necessarily for planting everything that I want. So what I tend to do with the furrows is I knock them down. Now let me show you what I mean by that. You can see the garden's all furrowed here and that's because uh, the farmer does it with a plough. He does a great job and prepares the soil for us beautifully but I'm not a great lover of planting in furrows. It's all right for taties but I prefer beds. So you can see what I've been doing here. Where I've planted the potatoes in here I've just plant it in between these furrows and then I'll earth them up and give myself a lovely big healthy mound of potatoes there. Now there's two rows in there, they're around about 18 inches apart but the plan will be eventually it will just look like a huge bed, a huge mound coming down there and I'll just keep mulching it with old cow dung which is great. Now you can see over here where we've had the beds in there, you can see these three furrows in here. Now what I tend to do is, as you can see, I, I chop them up and I make beds out of them. Now these beds are around about four foot six, five foot across and around about eight or nine feet long. Now I find that's quite manageable and I can weed it from the sides. Now in this bed here is my beetroot. So I've just put them in there. They've just gone in there now so I've given all the soil a good spray as you can see. Hey, do you recognise these things? Do you recognise them? That's what I was showing you the other day of the old Venetian blinds at home. They make absolutely first class plant sticks. Anyway, in this bed here, as you can see, I've gone for carrots. Now, we do get a few problems down here with bunnies, with pigeons, and with the odd young deer. So these are my scarers. The idea is a couple of bouncy canes. So just even a little bit of wind blows them around. Loose strings and CDs to reflect the light. Now, certain animals do not like big eyes. So if you get yourself some CDs and you get yourself a good Sharpie, but of course, other marker pens are available by request. And make yourself up a few of these things. Very easy to do. Now my beds are in, the beds are watered. The seeds I'm hoping are gonna do well this year. That's the mold seeds we're trying. Now as these seedlings start to come through, it'll allow me to see how much bed space I actually have left. Now bed space to me is precious. Though not for sleeping in, not for sleeping in or anything else. Bed space is perfect because you can squeeze plants in, you can put vegetables in, in tiny little areas. So what I'm going to be doing a lot of this year is intercropping with salad veg, which comes up quickly and then you harvest it, leave the roots in, Leave the roots in because A, if there's any slugs, they'll feed them and they won't go for your plants. And B, as the rot in, it turns back into compost in the ground and it feeds the microbes. So I'll be doing an awful lot of that this year. I also plan to put in an awful lot of flowers. Now I like marigolds. Marigolds are beautiful. They're edible as well and they also attract all the hoverflies, they attract the butterflies and they feed the bees. <laughs> What's not to like about a good old marigold? So I'll plant a few of them up at home, we'll get them in the greenhouse. Then once the greenhouse has sorted them out and they're ready to plant out, they'll come out to the plots and I will put them between my beds. I'll put nice big banks about a metre and a half across and probably about 12 inches wide big banks of marigolds and uh, hopefully the butterflies are happy and the birds stay away end of the season I'll get some good crop now I'll also be planting a lot of white cabbage this year because I've just rediscovered sauerkraut can you believe it I've rediscovered it after blah, 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 years so I've made a bit of my own at home I'll show you that in another video it was so easy and it's cheaper than it is buying it so I'll be using an awful lot of the crop this year in the kitchen I'll film all that too and we can have a laugh at it together. So keep your eye on this spot 
somewhere around there, there should be a subscribe button. Uh, by the way, if you don't press the subscribe button, your computer will explode. So, you know, you might as well just press the button and save your computer. Catch you later. Now, here's another one of Geordie's cheap and chatty solutions to terribly difficult problems. Bird scarers. Now, for the cheapest in bird scarers you've ever seen in your life, bit of string, old CD or DVD, you know those old videos you hate and you can't do anything with them, you don't want to throw them away, use them. Or if you've got an old computer and all the old programs, what do you do with them? No one can use them, you can. If you recycle it and use it yourself, it's better than it is chucking it away. Bit of that and of course the aforementioned Sharpie. You see a lot of animals, particular birds, they don't like to see big eyes on things. And that's what they're watching when you sit beside the birds and they fly away. It's normally because your eyes start moving. So just big eyes. How about that? Do you know, if I was to put a big pair of lips on there and some nice eyebrows, that would look just like a girl I went out with when I was about 16. But I'll not mention her name because she might see this. And I don't know what might happen. So we'll pop one on both sides so that as the wind blows, the spin around and the reflection scares away anything that's there. A bit of string through the hole, Bob's your uncle, pigeons are gone. Give it a shot. Well, I hope you enjoyed those garden tips from Jory's Cheap and Cheerful Chatty Gardening. Now, don't forget, if you subscribe up there or down here or there or wherever the hell it is, I'll make sure that you get to know when the next one comes out. And you too can turn your pokey little postage stamp of a garden into a major food producing farm. Well, maybe it's not a farm, but you'll get a canny supper off it. Press the button.